Hey guys, in my recent POV street photography video, you might have seen that I had this filmic cinematic look over my GoPro footage. And if you haven't, then you should uh, go check it out. You can uh, find the video right up here. So the video was shot in the same way as I always do these uh, POV videos, where I put on my DJI Action Cam version 1 to my chest, and then I go out and shoot these photos. But normally I think that you get a pretty dull look from the DJI Action Cam, even though you use the Cine D look or whatever it's called, where it gives you this uh, little more flat profile, so you have a little more leverage when you're going to grade it. So what did I do definitely to get this cinematic look, this film emulation look? Yeah, you might have guessed it because of the title and the thumbnail. I did use a plugin called Dehancer. And just for a disclaimer right here, I was provided with a license from Dehancer, but I haven't received any money and I haven't agreed upon to say anything about Dehancer that I don't believe in myself. So this is a complete honest review from me to you and I hope you can uh, use it. So I am not in the pocket of them in any way. So first of all, I just want to say that I am no pro colorist, but I think I know when I see something that looks cinematic or filmic, and that looks uh, really great on camera. And I am a huge fan of these more moody shots and also these kind of faded retro vibe that we see a lot these days here on uh, social media. And I think this is here where Dehancer can come in great advantage for you if you want to get this kind of look yourself. Because Dehancer is all about recreating this timeless filmic look that we all adore. So I'm using Premiere Pro when I am creating these videos, but Dehancer comes to a lot of different applications when it comes to video and photo editing, along with DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, Affinity Plus, and all these names that they're called, these editing softwares, you can use Dehance to edit your footage. And also they have made a compatible app for iOS, so you actually can get this kind of look if you like to edit your footage on your iPad or on your phone. So what I like about this plugin is that you relatively easy can get a look that you like, even without any more advanced knowledge about how to color grade or how to recreate a filmic look yourself. So let me just go through how I edited my DJA action cam footage so you can see how I did it. So there are many tools and effects in the Dehancer plugin and it can be a bit tricky to understand what each of these uh, do. My advice is that you don't fiddle with each and every slider and number that you can change, but that you keep it simple. And as you learn on the go, you can always try to add more and experience what the, the different things do to each other. That being said, you can find manuals on the homepage of Dehancer that into a pretty great detail explains how each effect and each slider works for each effect. So if you really want to go deep into this and learn more about it, it is possible. You just have to take your time to do this. That being said, the plugin comes with more than 60 film emulations for you to apply pretty easily. And without being too technical, what I've read is that Dehancer have made these film profiles themselves by using some sort of technique in their own laboratory and then doing some sort of mathematical algorithm and then they have made these pretty cool emulations that you will not get anywhere else. So these are actual film emulations and not just some YouTuber that have made a lot pack for you to apply to your footage. So the recommended workflow from Dehancer is if you're using some sort of lock footage then you should color correct first first and then you should add Dehancer to the last part of it. But if you are editing in a standard Rec. 709 or a flatter profile, which is not a lock gamma profile like the DCINE one that I am using here on the action cam, then you can actually just apply Dehancer straight to the clip and it should work fine. So what I did was I just added a adjustment layer and to the adjustment layer I went into the effects and I searched for Dehancer and, and applied this to the adjustment layer and from here I could uh, color grade or add the film relation to the clips. I have tried to just do this straight to my footage from the A7 III and I think it is possible to do this but because Dehancer is quite a machine heavy 
piece of software, then I would recommend you just color correct it first and then you can add the dehanza effect afterwards because yeah, it will be easy on your computer and it will save you some time, I think. And as you can see, when you add the effect to the adjustment layer, it already changes something to the clip, like the colors and stuff like this. And I kind of wish that when you apply the effect, it would not change anything. And then when you go about and do your edits, then you would change uh, what you change and you can see the edit without all of the other effects that you might not want to be applied to the clip but of course it is possible for you to go through the different tabs and then disable them but i kind of wish that the, this was like standard or like there was a button that said disable all and then you could like start from scratch anyway the first thing that i did when i was editing this is that i went straight to the film look and with over 60 profiles, it can be a bit overwhelming to decide which you like and which you should pick. But for now, I have been using the Kodak Vision 3 250D and the Aqua Aqua Color Portrait. And I really like the looks of uh, these two. But of course, there are many more to explore that I might like in the future. So it's useful to know that this uh, push and pull slider can change the look of the film emulation. And what I've read is that film, when you process it in real life, behave differently according to the exposure that you put on the film. And here in Dehancer, the exposure is controlled by this uh, push and pull slider. So they have actually sampled three different versions of the profile that you can use in the software. So this means that you can use this push and pull slider as a creative tool to change the outcome of how the film look uh, looks on your footage. So basically this means that you can control the color contrast of how your footage turns out when you have applied this uh, profile of a color emulation. So the film profile effect is useful for dealing with flatter looks or if you don't know the color profile of your footage. So as I'm using the D-Cine like, this should be the place where I color just the clip to the likings that I like without uh, using Lumetri. For instance, I would like to add some more contrast and saturation. So I can go to the contrast here and boost it a bit. And if I boost the color boost, then it will add saturation to all the colors, but without uh, clipping it. Then if it is a bit too intense, what I can do is I can pull down the color separation a bit because this will take away some of the saturation on the most saturated colors in the clip. So this kind of works like saturation and uh, vibrance. So the print section here is something that you can leave out but I think it adds uh, a nice look to, to the overall image so I kind of like it. So as far as I know this is another creative way to work with your film look if you actually work on real film and then this is of course the emulation here in Dehanza. This is a way to like yeah, add a tint to your footage and me personally so far I've used uh, the linear one and the Kodak 2 and the Kodak 2383 version. Then you have a color head, and this is another creative way that you can add a certain look to your profile if you don't think that you are right there with the emulation that you have uh, applied. And yeah, I didn't use it for the action cam, but it is another tool for you to use if you want to tweak your clip further. Then we have uh, film grain, perhaps the most iconic effect you can add to your footage if you want to get this cinematic filmic look. For me personally, I really think that the film grain that you get from Dehanza is way better than the film grain that you can apply directly from the effect in Premiere Pro. So I really like this effect here. And again, there are many options for you to tweak inside the film effect and you don't have to mess with them all. Because my computer is pretty slow, I think it can be a bit hard to see what actually happens when you adjust a slider. So to work around with this, an uh, option could be to try to add some of these effects or push some of these sliders, then export a small clip and then do another one and with some other settings and then export that and then you can compare. And I would definitely do this if it comes to like the amount of grain and the size of grain because if you overdo this, it can also become too much, I think. But already by now, I think that we have taken this uh, boring flat GoPro footage and turned it into something that is way more enjoyable to look at and something that makes these kind of street photography videos a bit more interesting to, to see. But besides the film emulation profiles and the grain, there are a lot of different effects that you can apply that would also enhance the feeling of uh, this analog film look. 
that uh, we want. So we have Halation, we have Bloom, we have Gateweave and we have Film Breath that are all really cool effects that I don't know if you can find anywhere else that we can apply to the clip to make it look more analog if you like. Halation is this effect that will become visible around the highlights as this uh, kind of reddish orange -y look and it will wrap around the, the highlights and, and give this, this uh, really cool effect. It can also produce this red glare in the mid-tones which is mostly affecting the skin tones and I think this uh, looks uh, really cool but this is also also a really machine heavy effect and my machine here my old laptop do struggle a bit when I'm trying to edit this so it can be hard to see what actually happens when I push a slider because my machine is really slow to respond but I've found that the halation effect is most pronounced when the source limiter is at its lowest and the background gain is at the highest and if you set amplify to the maximum this can be a really good starting point and then you can gradually just reduce the overall effect until you get a look that you like. And if you're working with skin tones, which I'm not here, but if you increase the global diffusion, this can be an instant way to naturally enhance any portraiture that you have in your clip because it's filling the skin tones with a warm and a vivid uh, tone. So the bloom effect works really well with halation, I think. And the bloom effect brings this uh, misty, dreamy look to your footage. And it's more or less like using a mist filter. I have earlier made a tutorial here on YouTube on how you can uh, fake this look by using effects in Premiere Pro but I think the effect here in Dehancer is uh, way more easy to use and also produces a better result and yeah if you use this with halation I really think it adds something cool to your clips like you can see here if I turn it on and off there's just like this little glow to some of the highlights around the footage and yeah I really like this then we have Film Breath. This is an accidental change to the exposure and contrasts from frame to frame that some film cameras will produce. And if you use this correctly, I think that this can greatly improve the experience. Believe that this is an analog clip and not a digital one. This is also a really machine heavy effect. So it can be hard to see what's going on on the screen. And Dehancer also do recommend that you export these out so you can see it easily or that you at least have set settings to a way that you get a really smooth playback because if you don't have this it will be hard to see what's going on. Then we have gate weave which stands for mechanical swinging of a film strip while it is being pulled through a frame window in a film camera but basically what this means is that it will make your clip move a little as you play back and this will add this sort of effect that your clip is alive because it's yeah literally breathing or moving. So this was how I used Dehancer to get this uh, filmic look to my DJI action cam footage. My overall thoughts about Dehancer is that it's a really useful and cool tool if you like this sort of film emulation look that we see a lot these days here on social media. And I think that without really advanced knowledge about how film process work or color grading, it is actually possible to achieve this sort of analog feel to your clips and that's really nice. But as I've said a couple of times, the plugin is quite machine heavy and it can be a bit time consuming and hard to work with if you have a slow machine like I do because you really cannot see what you're doing when you are changing the sliders and settings uh, on the go. And also my render time was significantly higher than what it used to be. I actually had to export like 30 to 60 seconds clip and then combine it together uh, at the end to export this video. And that was a bit of a hassle and at a point I was actually afraid that I was never going to be able to export this without leaving my computer on for like two straight days. It was clear for me though that the processing of the GoPro footage was easier than the short clips that I had in the timeline from my a7 III. These took longer time for Premiere Pro to process. So I guess it depends on which camera and the bitrate of the clips that you are trying to, to put the hands on. But of course this is something that you need to be aware of 
if you're like me, do not have the fastest computer out there. So at least if you are considering getting a Dehancer and want to use it on a daily basis, then you should make sure you also have a computer that lives up to the at least minimum requirements of a Dehancer or even better, of course. That being said, if you want to try out Dehancer, they do offer a free trial that you can download from the webpage. And Dehancer have provided me with a 10% promo code that you can use if you at the end decide to, to buy this. And if you do this, you of course will help me out. So yeah, thank you if you consider this. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this tutorial about Dehancer. Please make sure to give me a like if you did, so I know that you would like to see these kind of videos in the future. And also if you haven't watched the street video that I talked about, then you can watch it right now. It should come up on the screen. Take care guys, I will see you around. Bye.